Welcome to Tech News Briefing. It's Monday, November 13th. I'm Julie Chang for The Wall Street Journal. Fire departments across the country are wrestling with a new problem, electric vehicle fires. And unlike their gas-powered counterparts, EVs combust differently, leading to fires that last longer and are harder to extinguish. Some firefighters are even finding that maybe the best approach is to just stand back and watch it burn. Here to tell us more about EV fires is our reporter, John Kyleman. John, can you start by telling us why EV fires last longer and are more difficult to put out? So electric vehicles are propelled by battery power. And if you think about it, you need to have enough energy in those batteries to propel 3,000 pounds or so up hills, across streets, you know, for hundreds of miles. And so you can just imagine how much energy that is trapped in those batteries when they're fully charged. And so when that battery is breached or if there is a design problem or if there are internal spikes of lithium that form over time and and pierce sort of protective barriers inside the battery, that can start a chain reaction known as thermal runaway, which basically it starts a fire and is very difficult to put out. And when one of these fires is burning, these batteries contain all sorts of toxic chemicals. And when those start to burn and emit fumes, uh, that's very dangerous. Can you tell us about one specific incident of an EV fire that firefighters had trouble putting out? Sure. There was a fire in September down in a town called Franklin, Tennessee, which is the home to the headquarters of Nissan North America. And what happened is that a a Nissan Leaf electric vehicle was charging in the company's parking lot. And for reasons that are not understood or or have not been made public at this point, uh, it caught fire. And the local fire department, this is the first electric vehicle fire that they have ever faced. And so they decided to be extremely cautious and they poured an immense amount of water on it, 45,000 gallons. And according to the fire marshal down there, a typical car fire needs something like 500 to 1,000 gallons to extinguish. So they used a whole lot of water. They were there for hours until it finally was extinguished. And what has Nissan said about this incident? Nissan has said only that they are investigating the cause of the fire. But to be clear, these kinds of EV fires, they are pretty rare, right? Car fires in general are pretty rare. There are roughly 170,000 a year in the U.S. There are close to 300 million vehicles on the road. So very rare, and electric vehicles make up only 1% to 2% of the amount of vehicles on the road right now, although that portion is certainly rising. So then how are firefighters responding to this uptick in EV fires? Well, they're really still figuring it out. As in cases like the one down in Tennessee, they just use as much water as they need to until the fire is extinguished. In other cases, if it's on a highway or something away from a fire hydrant or a steady supply of water and they just use what they bring with them, sometimes they decide that the wise course of action is just to let it burn itself out. There are other departments that are investing in sort of new gadgets, nozzles that you slip under the car where the batteries are typically located to spray those directly, big fireproof blankets that they will drape over the car to try and put out the flames. And even in a few cases, they've just knocked the flames down enough so that they can lift the car up and put it into a container of water or sand or something like that so we can just burn itself out and they don't have to sit there babysitting it for hours. And what about industry groups? Have you spoken to any of them? I spoke with the president of the Electric Drive Transportation Association, and it was her point of view that although EV fires are not more dangerous than fires involving gasoline-powered vehicles, they do require their own tactics. How are the companies, the car manufacturers, responding to this issue? There's a lot of technology in the works to try and cut down on these or possibly eliminate them altogether. There's a lot of work going on with solid state batteries that are different from the sort of liquid lithium ion based batteries that are prevalent right now. Those are thought to be safer. There 
are companies that are developing battery systems that if you have a problem in one of them, you can basically shut that one off and prevent any problems from spreading you know, to the other dozens of batteries that, that power the vehicle. There are materials companies that are working on things that are supposed to contain any fire within the battery cell that it breaks out in and not allow it to spread to others. Audi, for example, has filed a patent application for a battery that's supposed to be able to extinguish its own fire should one break out. You know, a lot more people are driving EVs now. Is there anything they can do to prevent these fires? The best advice that I heard came from a fire chief who said that people should just really pay attention to what the cars are telling them. There are a lot of monitors on these cars. And if it tells you that there's a problem, believe it and don't keep driving it like a lot of us do when uh, our check engine light is on in our old fashioned gas powered vehicles. So be aware of what the sensors are saying and don't try to put it out yourself because this is not something that a little old fire extinguisher is going to do much against. That was our reporter, John Keilman. And that's it for Tech News Briefing. Today's show was produced by me, Julie Chang, with supervising producer, Melanie Roy. We'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for listening.